to the next bit, and we finally made it to the next bit, which is the most crucial piece of this, is that you don't want two users to be able to update the cell at the same time and have to figure out which one you wanna keep because you're gonna delete somebody's data. So if you don't have a lock on that, when you're doing this concurrent work and you're trying to modify the same variable, um, you can run into some really weird problems. So implementing locks basically said says whoever gets here first gets a lock on it and the other person has to wait or fails and so you can set that up so that whoever gets there first does their change and then the other per person can be set up to either not be allowed to make that change um, or they can go and make their change after that person is completed so you could kind of wait for that um, so we'll take a look and see what this does um, but it looks like we're going to be using a um, some syntax here where we're going to set up a lock. I'm not entirely sure with this syntax for no brainer of how this works, but it looks like it's trying to create some sort of transaction uh, type thing. So we get a location and then we're going to replace the row. I'm not sure what branch does. Row equals nil. Uh, location, that's the location value, and then the lock, and then <clears throat> where lock is ID, and then update all. I'm not entirely sure what all this does, but um, that probably is either in the no brainer documentation to learn more about the locks, or it's in. Uh, rethink DB. So they have a bit of a description here. Complex looking query in the lock cell method is one op uh, in one operation. Looks up the cell, checks if it is locked, and if it is not locked, sets the lock to the ID of the user, which you see here. So checks the ID, or checks if it is locked. I'm curious where that does the check. I'm not entirely sure. Um, and if it is not locked, sets the lock to the ID of the user. Since we're setting the lock to the spreadsheet cell document that all users are subscribed to, uh, all users will receive any updates in lock statuses of cells. Unlock cell. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Hmm. Well, mm, not entirely sure on that one. But, uh, yeah, on the client side, we injected a monkey patch to hands on table to allow us to intercept the begin editing and finish editing functions by setting acquire edit lock and release edit lock properties. So basically, um, this is cool because when you hit one of the, you can select the cell and it doesn't matter, but when you hit enter to go type into it, you begin editing, and so that will lock that cell on the server side. And as you type, you can type as much as you want, take your time, no one else will be able to modify this. And once you're done, and you move away from it, and you've typed in there, it will unlock that, which is pretty cool. So this is going to call lock and unlock cell um, functions on the action cable channel for that location and then uh, call these callbacks. So it's pretty cool. Um, we'll grab the code for this from the GitHub repository just so that we have the correct uh, version of that. And then it looks like there's just a little bit of CSS that they added um, for that. So we'll be looking at this one that implements the locks and uh, take a look at the code changes for that. So really, it looks like uh, we have we have to implement a couple of these lock cell and unlock cell um, methods in our activeusers.coffee. Um, so activeusers.coffee. The reason why this is going in here is because that is actually where um, we store the location that the user is currently on. So this is the best place for us to um, 
to look up their current location. So it makes sense for us to go through the user in order to lock the cell uh, and we'll do that accordingly. So we have these uh, lock and unlock cell methods that you can use that delegate to the server side in order to uh, set up the locking and the unlocking. Um, they just take a location, simple as that. We are updating the spreadsheet cells.coffee, whoopsies. Uh, spreadsheet cells coffee. And we are uh, setting the location um, as a row and a column um, here. So, well, we're taking the R and C from the location and turning it into just an array with two values that are the row and column in order, as opposed to uh, having them named in like a hash. So we're also going into spreadsheets coffee and we're setting the active user, uh, underneath active users, we're setting current user to uh, basically a hash with the ID of unknown as a default. So we have a current user probably to start with. Um, and so then we go into setup down here and right underneath selected cells, we're gonna keep the cell lock callback. And then we're gonna add in our after render. Um, it's gonna go right here. And that will render the selected cells after render. And then we add in an acquire edit lock and release edit lock in there as well. We're gonna um, change the update cell to set the location as a, an object with the R and C uh, row and column values instead of just the array. And then we're gonna call the update lock. And then there's this monkey patch for the uh, this monkey patch is for a hands-on table, basically modifies the code for it so that it will allow us to get two new events. And those two events will be the begin editing and finish editing so that we can listen to those in order to set up our, um, our locks. So I'm actually going to go grab this since there's quite a few changes in that. I'm going to grab the code from this and we'll just paste it all in. Uh, rather than trying to make our changes one by one, this will be a little bit easier for the video. Um, and so we'll have all of that. And what else has changed since then? So we have this big change and we have our active users channel now has the lock cell and unlock cell uh, methods. So we have these two active users channel paste those in and this is basically going to say uh, th this has the options in here to keep track of whether or not the lock cell uh, was successful or not. So we have the lock acquired, lock refused, and the unknown result for lock um, and this will allow us to keep track of that and we'll see that in our Rails logs when someone uh, attempts to lock a cell. So here we can try and see, we don't have to do this refactor, but we can try to see if the upsert works. This will probably work because some of that location stuff has been modified. Um, so my guess is that this might actually be successful this time because they've gone and kind of like done location as row and column, but then sometimes it's like an object with the R and C values. So possibly the mixture of that uh, was causing it to fail before. So I'm curious about that one. Uh, so we'll find out and we can go and update the spreadsheet cells channel with that code. It cleans that up a little bit and we can also go modify our, our spreadsheet cell to have, to set the primary key on the spreadsheet cell as well as the lock on there. So spreadsheet cell We'll have those and remember the lock is just the user ID so we know who has the lock. Um, it's not a true or false or anything if it's locked or not. It's actually that 
Um, you get that as a byproduct of having either nil or a value, but you also get um, to know who owns the lock by saving that value as the user ID. So now we can open up the user model and we can add in that before destroy and the unlock cell uh, and lock cell methods. And the reason why you have the before destroy is if your user was editing a cell and they had a lock on it and they closed the tab before they finish, then um, you wanna make sure that it's not locked permanently forever uh, and no one can ever edit that ever again because that user has been deleted. Uh, that would be bad and so you have to take care of that in order to make sure that that situation does not happen. So that's why they do that and the complicated locking code um, that I still don't totally understand, but we'll see how it goes. So what I'm gonna do is clear the database here. So we're gonna delete these two tables and just start from uh, scratch. So we'll refresh the page here and we'll refresh the page here. Um, we have some JavaScript errors. Hands on table is not defined. Uh, that might be application uh, application HTML ERB. We might want to move our yield to the top because I believe that code is not. Um, so this code, where was that? Spreadsheets.coffee. This multi-editor patch was not actually being injected um, inside of the DOM ready function. So it was running as soon as it was possible to run, which was before hands on table had finally loaded. So this ran quickly and then it failed because hands on table hadn't loaded yet. So if you move that inject into here, that should be uh, good enough to keep the yield underneath your application stuff. Um, but that's one of those situations, yes, it works. So that's one of those situations where the order of your JavaScript and the execution of it being um, very crucial to how your code works. So you need to make sure your libraries that you're overriding and modifying are already loaded so that you can successfully override them. Or you can create your patch for it and then do the inject later once everything else is loaded. Um, and that's why these jQuery load methods are pretty common to see because for situations like that, you wanna make sure that everything's up and running um, before you execute that so that you don't get uh, errors based upon things just running too fast. So this is cool. We can say A, uh, well, this is not letting me edit any of these now, so that's a problem. Um, the lock appears to be, it, it thinks that all of these are locked or something. So that's not ideal, that's not working totally, totally as expected. Um, but we're making progress, so we're almost done. I have to figure out what's up with that. We have our tables, they've been cleared out. We should have the exact same code um, that everything else has. So let's take a look at our Rails logs and see if there was any um, any information as to the lock. And we see lock refused to uh, that user on cell 00. So the lock's being refused and we're not able to acquire the lock. And so the user.rb file, um, this code is not returning a successful lock for us. So active users, channel was the one that prints that out. So it says lock refused, result unchanged, result inserted. Um, so the lock cell was unsuccessful and it was unchanged. So I'm not entirely sure if I know uh, how that works um, in order to kind of debug that. I think that we got all of the code necessary in here for that. It's gonna be a little tricky to figure out what that issue is. So I did a little bit of debugging and couldn't really figure out what was wrong with the edit um, stuff. So I cloned their repository. I went through and made sure that all my files were the same. Uh, cloned their repository and so I've got it loaded up. They put some styles on it. 
Um, and we'll see if this works or not. So it does let me edit, this is cool. So when I double click on one of these, I can type the letter D and uh, you should have seen that user's data go over there, but you don't, unfortunately. So even their example is not working um, correctly for me. So that's interesting. Um, but the locks do work, and that's that was the thing I was having trouble with. So I'm curious as to what's missing from their example because I'm also having the same uh, like issues with theirs. So while this demo is pretty cool, you can tell that it's a little finicky um, here and there. And a lot of this stuff they mentioned at the bottom of their article that the there's some. Uh, stuff that they've added to the Ruby driver and the ORM to make this seamless integration um, And they're currently in a gem that uh, no-brainer streams gem and so this hopefully gets merged in but currently, you know, it's a little bit It's definitely an awesome uh, Situation and setup, but it's a little bit finicky here and there and doesn't totally work consistently um, for me at least so I'm curious to see what happens. I'm also curious if their um, if their action cable stuff actually causes issues with the the random users that I was seeing pop up in my examples. I don't know what caused that. I know that as I was recording, some of the tabs were you know open for a while and maybe weren't interacted with or something, and maybe those went dormant lost their connection and maybe the reconnect um, caused them to show up as a duplicate like a new user um, maybe that was what was happening there was just a reconnect between the action cable server or something which would of course make sense because then it would create a new user and stream from there um, and so maybe that was it I'm not entirely sure so yeah um, at, at a high level this is a almost fully functional demo that it works as you ex wait a minute did that actually update it's updating now as we're talking about it uh, I'm I'm not sure what happened there the first time that I booted this or refreshed that page it definitely did not work and now it does so there you go um, it is functional for me now so this may be a little bit finicky of a project, but it is really cool and it is very interesting to see what you can do with the React or Rethink DB database uh, change logs of feeds that you can get from it. I am really impressed by that and I hope that this becomes a lot more stable um, and I will probably be trying it out in the future again. While this wasn't quite the smoothest tutorial I've ever gone through, it was quite a fun one, and we built a prototype of Google Spreadsheets in like an hour and a half, so that's definitely not bad. Been pretty impressed with this, and RethinkDB seems like a really cool database. I don't know much about it aside from what we did here, um, and really the only feature that I know that you can do that's cool or unique to it is the real-time feeds. And that seems like a pretty awesome feature. Um, so yeah, that was an intro to building multi-user spreadsheets. Thanks to, F huge thanks to Fusion for writing the tutorial, building the gem, playing with all the stuff, um, publishing that, they're awesome. So I like those guys a lot. Thanks for the tutorial, thanks for watching. If you want to see me go through some other tutorials or something, just send me links to them in the comments. And uh, I'll record some videos like this uh, if you enjoyed it. So until next time, talk to you later. Peace.